Hey everybody, I'm Green Havoc, and today we're going to be taking a look at a silver-ranked Roadhog. Now this player feels a little stuck, so Sabuda, we're going to help you out. We're going to look at this video and figure out just what you can tweak with your gameplay to get that little extra inch in those games to secure those wins and start that climb. Without any further ado, let's get into it. All righty, everybody, let's get on into it. We've got our uh, our players here. We are clearly in placements. Looks around the silver-ish elo or ranking whatever you want to call it so uh should be interesting let's see what uh what this player likes to do it is a, a road hog player so we will be looking at the old hog man um i'm of course joined by sword walker for this video so oh for the horde i like that guy's name he's already uh, <laughs> yep getting a pro from us at least yep let's skip a little bit ahead Yep, definitely silver. And the enemy team is right there. Yep. Roadhog's trying to the hold reaper. on top of the point. <laughs> yeah. You can't fuck him in that. I like, yeah. the, I like the fact you paid attention to him, but just remember how the abilities actually work. So... One thing with your your hook uh, so far that I'm seeing is you're kind of like seeing a target, waiting a second, then hooking. So uh, you, you're just going to want to try to speed that up. And sometimes it's going to make you miss your hooks and sometimes it's going to make you throw, a, you know, a derp hook or something like that. But you want to try to have those hooks be something where it's like you see it, you take it, you see it, you take it. And not this kind of like way to beat, then throw it. I like the fact that you're um, using hardcover. You're staying behind the payload since you don't have a main tank. That hook would have pulled you to near certain doom if, uh, if you weren't playing so near your hooks up. So, right there. Let's go back. Ten seconds should be fine. So, we're here. We're trying to get out of the way. We see this Moira. So this is us seeing the Moira. We want this Moira. And, like, so right there, this is something where you want to just familiarize yourself with some of the jump animation. Because if you would have hooked, if you would have hooked instead of shooting, I almost guarantee you, oh my goodness, I can't get it to go just like the couple, the couple seconds. Right there, instead of shooting, if you would have hooked first, I think you could have uh, you could have gotten them, and uh, you kind of wanted to commit to an idea there a little bit, in my opinion. Um, so, staying behind the cart. So imagine this is the cart. Staying behind it is nice when the enemy team is, you know, using this as a firing line. So that way you're not just taking unnecessary damage. But, you know, pay attention to the kill feed because you guys had been winning this fight. And Roadhog's kit with his hook and just the high amount of damage you can put out with your shots if you hit them uh, can really help snowball a fight. So you should be... Uh, a little further up now obviously you're, you're the only person on the payload so you can't go too far up otherwise it's not going to move but i would definitely be playing you know on that front side of the payload since uh, you guys were securing the fight it's contested the crew yep. is contested <laughs> yeah <laughs> so more pay attention to those kind of things 
That was, that was a good hook. You just got counter hooked, so that's, that's yeah. Not too surprised there. Okay. So you want to be thinking to yourself: Are you gonna try to get out, or like, what do you? Yeah. Okay. You could have got, probably got both of them had you um, been a touch more accurate, which which isn't too surprising. One, you're in silver. Two. Uh, I think panic set in a little bit there. So your mercy is down right now, though their McCree is down. They don't have an ability to res. So one of the problems I've seen with your hook so far is you got to remember that there's kind of a wind up to it. So there's like a uh, delay throw. And then, of course, there's still that travel time. So it's not a, you know, it's not a hit scan. It is a projectile. So you have to imagine if you're looking at a target and your target's moving this way, you want to start to know the speed of your hook to hook where they're going so that they kind of move into the hook and then you bring them in, you know, shoot them in the face. It looks like you. What is that dragon? It looks like you want to regroup. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, which is the right idea because your mercy was down the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. the, so. o the only thing I would suggest is if you want to regroup, you know, be spammed. That's good. Through the mines. I like it. Yep. Um, if you do want to regroup and your team's not, like, listening or cooperating, uh, or I guess more realizing that you want to do it, be calling that out. You gotta step forward, step forward, step forward, step forward. Guarantee those yeah. shots. Also, there was a Mercury that walked right by your left side. You might miss that, mm -hmm. but yeah. if you want to go back, <laughs> he kind of just walks yeah. by you and then ults your whole entire team from behind. Exactly. And let's let's go to that exact frame. And you're, you're here. There's the Mercury. He actually, yeah. Center of your screen. He rolls, and he walks right by you. <laughs> yeah. So... As an off tank, um, so, and this is something that people, well, it's really just all tanks, but it's more like Winston's and the off tank's job is you want to be a bully. And so right now you are being a bully to this area. However, one of the things you want to try to think of is it's like, okay, so you've got a guy here, you've got a guy here, we're, we're down this person, and we know we have a teammate somewhere over here. It's probably the Mercy. This McCree back here is your job. It, because ultimately, if the Hammond plays well, he has this as a retreat, he has, like, in there, up under the high grounds with his grapple as a retreat, and most of their team is not going to be able to keep up with him. This person's relatively safe here. Uh, the Reaper's ulting, but you don't need to worry about that right now. The McCree, though, as a hit scan hero, and same with the sniper hero, like the Hanzo, they're heroes that if you ignore them, their value scores skyrockets their value is going to go from like eh to insanely high as they just start to you know get to stand on ledges or as this mccree does behind you on the back ramp and just get a free ult so um also listen to the to the sound cues because that's the sound cue was you know it's high noon, and you heard him. He was behind you. So just try to pay attention to those kind of things. It'll make a huge difference in your gameplay. I need to see you aim more, but your sensitivity looks a touch high to me. Um, and, and kind of what I mean by that is it's like you don't draw straight lines. Like when you're looking around, you're kind of like... You're crosshair vibrates so it looks like to move small like increments like this you have to really meticulously like make that happen versus just going like i'm going here or here or here so 
might want to play around with your sensitivity a little bit. But ultimately, sensitivity is something that is um, you want to make sure you're comfortable with. Someone's just right on. Nice hook, though. Nice, you guys are going to get this. Nice job. Uh, Roadhog announced his position, and you kind of ignored him, and now you're dead for it. So, uh, again, you want to listen to those footsteps. You want to. Um, I don't know if you play with a headset. You might not play with a headset. That would make sense. Um, if you don't play with a headset, I suggest you play with a headset because the ability, the and, and the reason for this, just as a quick explanation, is it's like, you know, if you have speakers what happens to the left and right and up and down all is just going to come at you from, you know, one angle. Whereas when you wear the headset, you get the understanding of what is above you, what is, like, to, like you get that directional sound, you know, so you really can understand every angle that something's, you know, coming from. So those things like the, you know, the high noon, instead of just hearing it on your speakers, you actually will get the indication that it is behind you. So that that honestly could be the other re that could be the other reason why um, you haven't reacted to some of these as I might not be playing on headphones. Just uh, right there, like, with that tracking of the Ana, like, she moved in basically a straight line, yet your crosshair was, like, on her, off her, on her, off her, off her, on her. Like, y you were, like, constantly over and under adjusting. So that that's another reason why I would suggest you take a look at uh, your sensitivity and play around with that. Um and you want to get a little more comfortable with your, your shots as far as left click, right click. And so you just want to like play around with that, um, the, the difference in the range. When you do it right, you're accurate and you're not missing too many of your shots. You're doing pretty well. But when you're... I feel like when things are happening a little faster, it's not muscle memory to you and you need to think about it. So that's what's causing some of the delay. Nice hook. Card. Yep. Um, this is something that honestly a lot of players do. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fault you for it. So you you get this hook. That's nice. You get hooked. So now this is a minor thing, and maybe you would have died anyway. But you back up straight. You go that way, which is the firing line. The, the sight line of the enemy team. So, can I back that up just like... Perfect. So, and, and now this may not have saved you. However, if instead of walking... So, you were here when you got hooked. Instead of walking to this position, where you're literally in the full sight line of the enemy team, if when you were hooked here, you hugged the wall just so there was a little bit more hard cover from an angle, maybe this McCree can't quite get his shot off on you. You know, obviously, this is where your healers want to hang out anyway, so you get that hard cover advantage. So that's just something to, to be thinking about, uh, which I think in general, again, you do. It's just not that muscle memory to do it. Because uh, you were doing it in the beginning of the map, and I think you got a little panicked here. But uh, you know, using hard cover to the the biggest advantage that you can uh, you can get out of it. Yep. Also, make sure that you turn around so they can't just headshot you. Yes. It's very hard to hit Roadhog from the back. Mm -hmm. So. That's a great point. Plus, also you're not backing up, so you're moving slightly faster, so you can get away a little bit quicker. Yes. Just minor things like that definitely help in the long run. Like these small little things do add up. That Kree is just getting away with everything. Yeah. <laughs> You're just kind of sitting on the high ground uncontested right now.
guys might be able to frag out. Ah, uh, probably not now. Wow. You got like, two people on wow, the cart. You guys got the point. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I I did not. I guess someone that. stepped off. Yeah. The good old fashioned C9 potentially. We couldn't see it. Yeah. It yeah no it looks oh. like a C9. They're all right here. I don't know. Yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. How yeah. did you guys get this point? Yeah. Also, like the mercy going in and going for the hero res and fi into five people. <laughs> Don't worry, That's if they're funny. all here, they'll all think they should shoot me, and none of them will. Yeah. That's a good hook. You probably could have popped some shots into that Reaper that was teleporting, mm -hmm. but. Yeah. Oh, pull her into those mines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually I haven't thought too much about the bed. It's actually not bad. I don't, I think realistically you would not run these two tanks together. Uh, in an ideal scenario, but it's not a bad combo. Uh, one of the things that you want to do in that scenario, instead of just waiting for that, uh, waiting for that hook, make that Widowmaker know that you want to shoot her so you know, you got to imagine like no thank you uh you got to imagine this is that bridge she's on this is the doorway she's in you want to instead of just sitting here waiting like ooh I'm gonna try to hook you you should be spamming your right clicks just up in that general um direction and making her know that you're paying attention to her positioning. Because, again, with those heroes like the Widowmaker, Hanzo, McCree, if they're not put under pressure, it's like the epitome of the old uh, American football adage. Um, I can't think of the word. Um, that uh, basically a good quarterback becomes a great quarterback given enough time. And that's what all of the hit scan slash sniper heroes do, is if you ignore them, and they just get to sit there aiming their shots, they will start to do work. If they're not great, and you start to put pressure on them, then you'll go, hmm, man, they're really not that great. You guys get it anyway, but... They almost turned that fight around because you decided to meme at the Widowmaker instead of turning around immediately and continuing the fight. So just keep that in mind that, you know, like, I don't mind at the end or if you're, you're getting a big stagger or something like that. But, you know, when you haven't won the fight yet, let's not, uh, let's, let's leave the memes out of it. Yeah. There's something to be said about mentally messing with your opponent. But uh, that's probably not the time to do that yeah. in the middle of a fight. Yeah, not when you're about to cap third with a decent amount of time. And the only thing that could stop it is the enemy team coming out and they're coming out with ultimates. Um, yeah, you should be looking to, to camp the doorway, either the left or the right one there. Especially since, um, especially since you're a road hog. And you yeah, I believe you had your ult too, right? You had his ult, whole hog? So this is already silly. I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah, making the same mistake as the enemy team, essentially. Um, Except you don't have a shield, so it's worse. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but th So the other reason why you don't want to do what you did is um, in the higher elos, or ranks, so like I said, whatever you want to call it, um, the enemy team are going to switch to stall heroes, such as tracers or um, maze and characters like this, and those kind of characters, once they start to get rooted onto the objective, can really start to be annoying. And then all of a sudden, your time bank of a minute turns into 45 seconds, turns into 30 seconds, turns into overtime, all because you allowed a May to get on point. Um, so that's the big reason why you want to keep your head in the game. You got the Widow, turn around and make sure that they're not getting the heroes they need to waste time onto the point. Yep. I've seen many teams lose before because they were ensured that they thought they won and then they end up getting 
on the point, and then they end up all stop, coming stop, back. Stop, and stop, stop. It's a bastion way outside of your fire range. <laughs> yeah. You got, you got to make sure you get some of those turns a little bit. I would practice that in the practice range on the bots that move on the right side of the map. So. Yeah. Know your hook range. Ooh, unfortunate the res got... Uh, that, that Reinhardt just got huge value with that charge. Stop the res and uh, killed your Reinhardt. So yep. I don't actually know what you guys were trying to do. Um, you don't want to hold up that far, period, ever. Like, unless you're in, you know, the overtime rounds. Where are you going? What are you doing? Back up. What are you doing? Back up. Back up. Back what are you... Do you know where your team is? Do you, like, you're, right now, like, we, I, your thought process has to have been, they're moving the cart, gotta stall the cart. It's always better to regroup and take the team fight, even if that means that they get the cart up to here, and it's almost capped. It's always better to make sure you're going to be able to take this as a uh, as a team. Also, you should have tried to hook this in, yeah. That's a side point. Major point being, Major just point. like look to regroup. Like as an example, your positioning right here, I'm relatively okay with. Un because I mean, you know, there the the cart's here. We know that four people are on the cart. This person's not on the cart, which means five of their players are accounted for right here. There's only one where we don't know the position of. So I'm okay with your positioning right here, until you go past this box because you have to imagine if this is where four people are, what's their sight line if they're on this, this this whole passageway over here. So. As long as you are behind this box, you're safe. Yep. Realistically, if you wanted to do this, I'd be playing in that right doorway. Also, the per the sixth member is here. I don't know if you yep. noticed them. Um, he shoots you. So you now you know. <laughs> and, but yeah. see, the, the thing is, and this is kind of what I mean by the awareness, is you've been shot now twice, and I don't think you know that he's there and you start to heal and then for some reason you re-engage there's their bastion there's their moira there's their zen there's their reinhardt there's the guy over there like mm -hmm. you're literally deciding to take this fight right now 1v6 for absolutely zero reason and then they kill you and it's like oh look your team was you know right here so you go oh it wasn't 1v6 my team was here were you behind your Reinhardt? No? Then your team wasn't there because you were in front of your Reinhardt. You got to make sure. That's on you. This is on you. You needed to make sure that you were with your team and you weren't. Yep. And see, can they get this res off? They do get the res off. Um, your Brigitte was able to get the McCree, so this is still a semi-winnable fight. Um, again, with that delay on the hook, you wanted to hook the Zenyatta, and then it was just slightly too delayed. Shoot. Thank you. Um, try to commit to a target when you're, you're, you're shooting them. Like, you want to make sure that you're not... Like, tracers will kind of be a little more like ooh that one ooh that one ooh that one ooh that one same with like the sniper heroes because they're going to take the shots they think they can hit or they're going to prioritize certain heroes yada yada but for for roadhog in those brawling fights you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your damage which means you know n like zenyatta hitbox little feet hands right Winston hitbox. So, yes, Zenyatta is a, a high priority target. However, you can do so much damage with your main weapon shooting at something where your entire spread can, like, guaranteed hit. 
like on the like on a Winston, that Zenyatta's healing isn't going to be able to keep up with it. And then all of a sudden you delete their Winston, and then if Zenyatta has no one to heal, what's the Zenyatta going to do? So you want to try to be thinking about what can you get the most value out of shooting, especially in solo queue and especially at the the rank you are uh, you are at. Okay, going a little on flank. So, hmm. see this this again makes me kind of think that you might not be playing with headphones because I was okay with that flank. So where you are right now is fine. And the reason is, so we, we don't know where any person is. All we know is that they don't have their Moira right now. But what we should be listening to, and let's listen. We hear the Bastion shooting. If the Bastion's shooting, it means he's set up over here. Which realistically means more than one person is right here. We hear their team. We see their bubble. And for some reason, you decide to look. So this kind of lets me know that you either aren't familiar with trying to listen to the game as far as um, the sound effects, or that you don't wear wear headphones. Um, again, trying to hook into the shields. Um, so this is a case of just try and back up, or just try and run and leave and turn around so you can't get the easy headshots and because you do move slightly slower while backing up. Okay, so now the enemy team gets to come in. Oh, that hammer was almost cool, but it wasn't. And your Mercy's down, your Reinhardt's down, your Moira's down. At this point, I wouldn't go in at all. Yeah, I, I would not. back up. You should be, like, looking at the kit. You've decided to come in and try to make a hero play, and you're done. So, I, yep. uh, one of the things, and, uh, I mean, this is going to sound super mean. This fight and this point is on you. It, it, this, it, it, this whole, your entire team dying all started with you going down to the enemy and going, hey, I'm right here. Shoot me in the face. And they're like, oh, no problem. And you're like, by the way, did you know you guys can come up these stairs? And they were like, oh, we didn't even think of that. And then they came up those stairs and your team was like, whoa, that's not where they were coming from before. Crap, they're on our mercy. And the entire fight devolved from there. So literally being out of position f at for one, I mean, for one moment is what costs you... Um, that entire point whereas if you would have just waited with your team and you know defended the alleyways that they could come from since they don't have the ability to flank not with the heroes that they're using currently you guys may may have been able to full hold in there but by getting greedy that's uh that's what happens also you got split spawned and your team didn't back up, so now all of this progress is partially um, on your on your team for uh, I mean, for trying to hold up the way they held. But this is also still in the ramifications of that single death that you had. Good hook. Might as well stall the point. Where are you? Yeah, so with a Bastion, if the enemy team has a Bastion and you aren't kind of as a team ready to try to take down the Bastion, he's not really a character you want to try to go with like 1v1 or take. And since we knew he was over here, I would have just stood behind this large piece of hardcover, stalling the point indefinitely and making that Bastion have to commit upwards. So then, yeah, you're going to back up and you're going to say, okay, fine, you can start moving the card again. But then maybe your team's regrouped, and because he's taken a more aggressive angle, he's in a more punishable angle that you can re-engage on. Yeah, we've kind of harped on a lot of this, but, like, that Bastion didn't move from his original spot. Mm -hmm. So he was just there the whole entire time shooting. Oh, good, but... You got hit. 
heal. So you, I mean, the second you got below half health, you probably should have just, oh man, that Bastion just got to lull flank you guys. And for some reason, we're committing ultimates to this fight. So, uh, I mean, I, I would just like to say that so far, since that first death on point A, it has been a constant five versus six that then you trickle into, but only after like your Reinhardt's done or your Mercy's done. And then it's, you know, a four verse maybe five, but then they get, and so you guys are just kind of constantly trading out who is in the fight. And again, it's, and it's hard, but I always say, let the, like the only thing that matters is stopping them from getting to point C. That's the only thing that matters now, or point B, or point A. All of the progress leading up to that doesn't matter. Um, so... You should be here against the hardcover, because they can't see through this wall. You'd still be able to hook this Bastion. As you hook him, you do a nice little... Uh, 90 degree turn this way put the bastion here now the entire enemy team cannot help their bastion your team who should be presumably looking this way can um can all shoot the bastion you can kill the bastion and you don't die but again by taking this overly aggressive angle like what you you literally jumped out into the middle of the streets looking at their entire team, looking at a Bastion who's one of the highest damage dealing heroes in the game. And so if you're anything but like, if you're surprised at all that the enemy team kills you here, you're being silly. Um, so again, your death has provoked the enemy team to become very aggressive. Your Reinhardt's down now. Your maze down now. You can stop that charge with your hook. You should have just hooked him the second he did he injured his charge animation. Don't worry about the point. Yeah, you could whole hawk here too. When you hooked him, you could have just whole hogged the Reinhardt. It's not a bad combo against a tank. So yeah, your ult usage is um, definitely shaky. And th again, you know what? This third point, this is on you you started their aggression because you decided to run up onto streets by yourself not knowing where your team was got yourself picked and then because you got picked the enemy team got very aggressive and they got very aggressive on a 6v5 and your team couldn't handle it so I, this is really where positioning comes into the game and why it's so important uh, because yep. what you're thinking is like, ooh, I gotta go stall the point. Look at all the progress they're getting. Look at all the progress they got because you didn't wait for your team to uh, to have the team fight. Yep. It's better to hold farther back at a point which you can actually defend than to hold really far up and stall them for like one or two seconds all die, and then they get a better positioning when you have to fight them again. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Awareness is definitely not your strong suit this game. Comparably, his mechanics aren't as bad. His or her. His, okay. There you go. See yep, you. that was good. So, and if, if in which case it might have just been reactions before, and if reactions are just something that come with time. So, no yep. Good hook. Unfortunate, but you had the uh, the bat team backing to, to keep that going. Nice coalescence. Mm -hmm. I don't know how their Boira died to that. That's silly. Bastion's yep. behind you. Bastion's behind you. Bastion's behind you. 
you, you, you just let that bat. You have the ability to stop him in his tracks. We heard him drop down behind. We heard him turret form, and we heard him literally eviscerate. I mean, two of your uh, your allies. Whole hog. You have a whole hog. You have a whole hog. You should have whole hogged way sooner. Yeah, R Roadhog's ult isn't like a huge value ult. You just try to get value out of it. It's not like a crazy ult that you need to hold for anything. You should have whole hogged here, right now. That that this is when I, I would have I would have tried to hook this Reaper and then whole hogged. Well yeah. hook shoot then whole hog. Mm-hmm. Because Again, paying attention, we know their Bastion's out of the out of the equation, so we know he's he he's gone. We don't know where their other teammates are, but we know their Reapers here, and we can presume since we got that triple ki uh, kill, uh, the Moira did at least, that their team is somewhere behind that that doorway. Yep. And if you hook Reaper, more than likely you'll get the charge to get your ultimate so, here. You miss the hook. We look. He's running away. We see the Winston. Whole hog as soon as you get it. You get it, let's see here. 94% and I would whole hog now. We see the Reaper yep. up top. Uh, we There's an enemy Coalescence coming from your left. What does Coalescence mm -hmm. want to do? Coalescence gets its value out of, you know, this is your teammate, this is your teammate, this is the enemy teammate, this is the enemy teammate. He's wearing a hat. McCree. Um, and then the coalescence is back here. The coalescence gets its value out of going through allies, through enemies. Well, what's a good ultimate to make it so she doesn't get the sight line she wants? Whole hog, since it moves people around. If you were to move start if you were to turn and start moving that um, I mean, you could literally be knocking this Reaper out of range, stopping this Primal from punching your soldier in the face, trying to move that Coalescence so she doesn't have good targets, though she's not aiming at the the right areas right now. Anyway, like, and, and this has kind of been a running theme. I don't think I've seen an impactful ult from this game, so. Uh, it, especially since Roadhog's ultimate is so fast charging and this is o in overtime on the last point. Really should have used your ultimate. There's basically no reason not to. Yep. It's not a team wiping ultimate usually ever. Unless it's combined with other ults or they're being... You get a super op like opportunistic spot. So... so. Again, Just try to get as much value hold. as you can out of it. Again, you guys are going to hold way too far up, but again, this is silver, so not too surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Your Bastion's down. You, you guys are going to be able to get the res. res. Just it's free reign on your team. Walking around the shield, yeah, it was fine there. That was a good idea. You, you messed up with your... Oh, no, now you don't have your hook. Yep. That was fine, though. You, you played that uh, that ramp well. Yep. Could have been create, better. Create room for your Bastion. Decent. Create room for your Bastion. Nice job. Uh, yep. Anyway. All right, they're trying to rest Bastion. This is for the most part... I mean, within a bell curve, this is all over. Porch. You let him grab that health pack instead of grabbing it yourself. Be aware of mm -hmm. uh, where those are. Oh, and that probably is going to be the game right there. I'd be surprised if you guys are even able to get another contest out. Mm, does not look like you're going to be able to. No, you're not going to be able to. So, um, I really don't think the um I, I really don't think the enemy team outskilled your team by a large margin um i think it came down to a simple a, a, a couple more simple things so we've got uh mechanics we've got uh positioning we've got cooldown management we've got ultimate economy um your mechanics 
I honestly would say are fair. Now, there's a few things that I think you should look at. Uh, like I said, I think you should look at your sensitivity. Um, and I would play around a little bit with understanding the speed of your hook, which, again, you can do that in the training ground, um, on the bots, just getting used to hitting those kind of moving targets. Uh, your positioning was uh, poor. Uh, in fact, it was, like, very poor. Uh, anytime you panicked, it's like the, the, the use of hardcover was great in some moments, and then it was just non-existent in others. And point A, or point A on their first round of offense and point C on their first round of offense both almost entirely were, were on you for letting yourself get picked off which i mean because again if you're roadhog you have 600 health the ability to take 50 percent less damage and heal yourself and somehow you get yourself picked off like it means that you were so out of position that despite, despite the fact that you were a tank and you have a heal it didn't matter um your cooldown management was uh fair uh i felt like you could have used you could be a little more aware of the timings on it and the multiple uses of your abilities. Like it's not always about, you know, waiting till you're at a hundred health to heal. Sometimes, sometimes you pop your, you know, your, your breather while you're at, you know, 500 health, but it's because you're being shot by a bastion and he's shooting you. So you're getting him to waste his shots. You're tanking his damage. Now you're giving him ult charge, which is something to, you know, be aware of, but, you're not dying while he's shooting you, which gives the opportunity for someone else to do their job. Um, so your your cooldown management, for the most part, was fair, but I think you need to be thinking of the more unique we, unique ways you can be using your ability. And your ultimate economy was poor. Um, partially because you were not uh, in the right position, so you were feeding the enemy ults. So that definitely hurts the ult economy as it's going to swing the ult, uh, ult economy in, uh, in their favor. Your cooldown management uh, could have been a little cleaner. And if it can be a little cleaner, uh, you'd be getting more ult charge. So that's, you know, you're getting less ult charge. Your mechanics got you a decent amount. And then the, the, but the last big thing is your actual ultimate usage was almost never in an opportunity that really secured just about anything. And one of the things to remember with um, Roadhog's ultimate is because his shots are projectiles, he doesn't have damage fall off. You've had a Mercy the whole game who was relatively, uh, there was no voice comms, but it was, I mean, relatively um, trying to communicate, uh, communicate in chat and things like that we saw her type a few times so you could literally take the second to ask her via chat or if you are if you did have a headset just hop on comms for a second to let her know to damage boost you because whole hog since it doesn't it's projectile doesn't have fall off which means the only reason it does less damage at range is because of its insane spread but damage boosted this is still an area of a lot of damage you could be pumping out so it's just something to be thinking about as far as your ultimate usage goes when you have a Mercy and they are being, you know, talkative. Swordwalk? Yeah. Um, mostly, just think about, like, what targets you should be hooking on top of, like, as far as mechanics go. Um, there's a couple times where you kind of just threw your hook out um, where you needed to save it. But other times you took really good opportunistic cooks, so I think that was pretty good. A big thing is just like make sure you pay attention to targets. You need to command an area as an off tank. Your area, like you can't command as big of an area as like a main tank can with a shield. But you should be kind of trying to deny the enemy from just running past you, like you did a couple times, where you just kind of let the McCree roll past you in some scenarios. So yes, exactly. Because and to. To, to jump off that point is essentially one of the big things that all tanks want to do um, is either grant space for their teammates or deny space from the enemy. 
And that's Roadhog's job, even even though it seems like, oh, well, he's a 600 health damage dealer. He's supposed to just go shoot people and kill things, right? Like, that's what he's supposed to do. Yes, but also understanding how to use his kill potential and kill power to go like, mm, you don't feel comfortable standing here and you don't feel comfortable standing up there because you know I'm going to try to hook you or I'm going to shoot you. So definitely making sure that you're denying the space of the enemies is a great point. Um, As far as comms, there was no comms to go on for this video, so I can't comment yep. on how you would do there. Uh, though we are huge advocates here at ESHQ for comms, they're just so helpful on should we ult, should we, you know, is this fight won, backup, regroup, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I, I think... Um, there's definitely some stuff that you need to work on, but there's a few things that like, if like, as an example, if you sorted out your, your aim a little bit, so you were just a touch more consistent because you were a little like hit or miss the ideas were right with your mechanics, like what you were trying to go for, but just not quite the implication every time. So, uh, our application of it every time. So, you know, adding a little more here could get you so much out of Roadhog, making sure that you hit those shots and hit those hooks. Cleaning up your positioning just a little bit is going to just change your entire world once you start to realize the, the corners, the nooks, the crannies, um, the walls, and all that that you can use to get the most out of, uh, especially Roadhog, but all characters in general you'll start to just go like you'll sing Aladdin to yourself because it's a whole new world. Um, and then the, the last big one that I would focus on is just your ult economy. Look for those spots to ult and start by changing your ult economy just by using your ult efficiently. But if you change those three things, if you just work on that positioning, which isn't super hard, it's just, you know, trying to remember about how and why you're in a, uh, in a position and then looking for the value out of your ultimate, I, I guarantee you that uh, you'll see a lot more out of your own gameplay. Alrighty, heroes, we are out of here. I hope you found this video both fun and educational. And Sabuda, I hope this helps you climb. If you want to submit a video of your own, just follow these instructions. And until the next video, we will see you on the ladder. <laughs>